Good morning, folks. Welcome, observers. Today, we're hitting something new with the USGS. I, Candy from Chandra of 30 Doradus, will see a micronova so small it's basically a nanonova, and we'll wrap up with a significant story about solar blasts and two announcements. We're starting with the last 24 hours on our star where solar flaring maxes out in low M-class flare range. They are impulsive as well, not producing much in the way of CMEs. Meanwhile, we're waiting for stronger elements of a coronal hole solar wind enhancement. The flaring is distributed quite a bit, earth-facing and incoming sunspots on the left side showing that flare flashing here in 94 angstroms. We have quite a number of sunspots, but most are too small to make major flares. We'll continue watching their development, and speaking of which, one, cut the coronal hole in half. Folks, brightness bifurcating that dark strip, sunspots slicing right through the coronal hole. We're off to the USGS next, and if the map looks a little different, yes, it is. In fact, they've completely changed both the look of their real-time earthquake map feature and the labeling of some of the items to reflect a more forward-looking picture of the future. Up next, we're at 30 Doradus, where optical, visible light, infrared, radio waves, and x-rays have been combined to reveal something spectacular, almost looks like a bouquet. They say they're able to spot nova remnants, stellar magnetosphere shockwaves, and much more. Link to the images and videos in each wavelength is at the link below. Up next, a true micronova. Folks, it released the same amount of high-energy light as an X1.6 solar flare. That's right. And folks, at approximately 200 to 500 times weaker than what the solar micronova is expected to be, this dwarf nova event is truly down at the nanoscale on the list of nova events. Lastly, on the article front, the proton event 10 days before the supermagnetic anomaly Earth took in 2023 may have been a more special solar-driven event than any of us had realized. The solar blasts were so big, they sent an energetic particle shock in every direction. It's very lucky that blast wasn't directly fired towards Earth itself, but they say a circumsolar eruption is to blame for the readings. Folks, the only existing model of this is from UCAR. It's nearly 15 years old, and there should be able to be scaled versions of this, which means smaller at the energetic proton level like we took in 2023, and larger like we'll see with the solar micronova. Folks, if you get the Observer Review, our e-magazine, not only is the next issue coming out tomorrow, and wow, it's a doozy, but now you've got a members page. The link is below and you just put in that same email you used to sign up, the one where we send the issues every month. Everything is in one place and we're still going to send the emails, but now you've got your Observer Review library. Sign up for the e-magazine at the link below. Again, one day until the next issue. Folks, I'll be at the Observer event at the ranch on Saturday. If anyone is in the area, I'd love to see you hang out for a bit. Lots of great things are happening every week at the home of the Observers. Check out the event schedule, book your reservation, play with the Observer bot, or grab our books and merchandise. I'd love to see you in person. It starts at ObserverRanch.com. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.